So let's head to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Kyle Hughes was Dustin Hopkins. I think he kicked, what, five or six 50 yards to help to win the game that was close. If we can get that kind of protection, of course we want touchdown. But my main concern is the scheme. I like to see more of the guys with the speed, like Matt Landers, because he's 4-3 speed. Big guy, he can play tight end, too. He can fill in like you have your three tight ends with David Nantelco, maybe even a Cedric Shelton. He can be so as wide receiver tight end. As always, appreciate all the voicemails. Um, Jeff, we talked about Hopkins. Uh, he, if you show you can kick down at that stadium, long-term deal makes sense. Um, relative to the, the, the tight ends, we don't know what this scheme is going to look like. My sense is they're going to try to get it to look similar to what he was doing being Watson in Houston where you identify matchups and you get the ball to him quickly. That's something Deshaun Watson did really well. And I think that's one thing that maybe, you know, and look, you know, I'm guilty of it. And you guys know, I, I've talked a lot about, you know, what are you doing at the tight end position outside of David Njoku? But if we learned anything about David Njoku last year, we learned that he's just not another general tight end. And, you know, last year, maybe just last year, we saw truly what he he is capable of. And it is, it's, it, and it's always been the line with David Njoku is, he is too fast for linebackers, and he is too big for defensive backs. So it becomes a coverage nightmare. Uh, you certainly got you know, the full David Njoku experience in the first half of the New York Jet game last year. He's just running those crossers, and you know once he was past the linebackers, that up came the defensive backs, and you know, 200 pound defensive back against a 245 pound tight end who runs a four six. He was either breaking the tackles or he was flat out beating them and extending plays for major major yards. I think maybe part of what the issue is, is, you know, they look and say, well, look, David's a gift. And we can't just say anybody else can go out there and do what David does, which is probably, you know, what we all need to understand. You know, there's not a lot of tight ends who have the vertical jump of a David Njoku. There's not a lot of tight ends that have the speed of a David Njoku. And, you know, as he's you know progressed and become more and more of a complete tight end, which is one of the things that's probably most underrated about David is, you know, he, he got much better with his stance. He got much better as a blocker, but he's just a rare, rare breed as far as athleticism, the tight end position and what he can bring you as far as his receiving aspect. And I couldn't agree more. I think it's more about finding the matchup that we think we can win, whether it's Amari Cooper, whether it was the jet game and it was David Njoku just feasting on linebackers and safeties. You can't just think that you just say, okay, just because David Njoku's down, we're going to put the next tight end in. Well, the next tight end is certainly not going to have the DNA or the athletic makeup of David Njoku. So then it would just be, well, we'll start playing more wide receivers. And, you know, as far as the running game, you hope the tight ends you do have, which maybe they don't just right now, can at least come in and be serviceable blockers. And then when you have to throw the ball, if you don't have David, you just start going with different matchups like a Cedric Tillman. The name Matt Landers seems to keep coming up. Um, probably a long shot, but um, you know, you you just want these guys that you know have a calling card, and you can certainly, as a head coach, and certainly as an offensive coordinator, you know what you expect from Ken Dorsey. Just kind of scheme guys open or scheme guys to say that this is the matchup we know should win on this given play, this given rep.